We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish what is up, YouTube? It's Christmas time, and I thought everyone's going on holiday um, lately, so we're probably going to need a good video on monitoring so we can monitor the systems while everyone is on leave. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Prometheus operator, um, specifically designed for making uh, managing Prometheus instances easier. So I'm going to show you the concept. We're going to dive right in, deploy a Prometheus operator and see what we can do with it. So this is the first video for basically understanding how to monitor workloads on Kubernetes. So your application workloads, microservices, as well as the actual Kubernetes cluster. So without further ado, let's go. So before we take a look at the Prometheus operator, it's important to understand the basics of Prometheus first. So let's look at a basic Prometheus running on Kubernetes. So in the, in the basic world, we deploy a namespace and then we use the traditional Kubernetes um, objects like deployment, pod, service, config map, secrets, and so forth to deploy a Prometheus instance. So we have a deployment, we have a pod replica of one, and here we specify the image number we wanna use for Prometheus, the version, um, all the startup command parameters, the environment variables, ports, etc. And here is where it gets tricky. We have a config map. Now in the Prometheus world, this config map is gonna become ginormous because it's, it becomes very monolithic because every single bit of service discovery and thing you want to monitor is inside this config map. And what Prometheus does is it takes this config map and then points to the pods or virtual machines that we want to monitor. So we can monitor things like the Kubernetes API server, the kubelet um, on, the, on each of the machines. We want to uh, monitor each one of the pods um, and may, maybe some custom workloads. So you can see it becomes really you know, monolithic in terms of managing this Prometheus instance. And now Prometheus is not designed to be just central. It's a decentralized monitoring system. So we should be deploying a Prometheus maybe per namespace. So we have one for cluster monitoring. We have one to monitor our microservices because think about if you have like 300 microservices, how would you um, manage this Prometheus instance? You've got to come and unfold this config map every time. So you can see the, the pain points in managing a distributed system when it comes to monitoring. So I think now you'll begin to understand um, what the role of the operator is. The operator is to remove the management of this config map and manage all these deployment and pods and make it really easy to manage multiple Prometheus instances. So what we do is we drop a Prometheus operator inside of our cluster. And this is just using a normal deployment um, Kubernetes deployment. And then what we do is when this Prometheus operator comes alive, it creates custom resource definitions. So um, a resource is basically like a deployment and pod service ingress config map. There's a new one called Prometheus. So we create a namespace and then we just say, I want a Prometheus instance. So a small YAML file um, that just gives us the name of the Prometheus instance, the service account we want to use to run it. And we can then basically deploy a standalone Prometheus instance to do every monitoring role that we want. So we can have one in a monitoring namespace that monitors the Kubernetes API and all the virtual machines for our cluster. We can have another namespace called like apps and we can have a Prometheus instance that's just dedicated to monitoring microservices. So this gives us that flexibility of running multiple Prometheus instances with ease. Now what we do, instead of managing a config map, we go and tell Prometheus um, that we have these services that we want monitored. Now, whether that be the Kubernetes API, whether it be your custom microservices, it doesn't matter. So another object that gets introduced here is called a service monitor. So let's say we want to monitor the applications. We define a service monitor for our applications. We also define another service monitor for our virtual machines that we want to monitor. And we use basic um, Kubernetes selectors 
to tell that Prometheus instance that it needs to monitor or grab these service monitors. So we tell the Prometheus instance what service monitors to select based on label selectors. Um, and basically what will happen is that Prometheus will come down and select these service monitors. And then at the same time, we tell the service monitors which applications, pods, virtual machines, or whatever we want to monitor um, to select using a, a label selector again. So that's how we then hook these up. So you can see um, the beauty about this is that when we have a microservice that has like a deployment pod config map ingress, um, it can also have a service monitor object to say, I'm interested in being monitored and this is my Prometheus instance I want to monitor me. And then they can check that into GitHub and basically just get monitoring um, out the box for every microservice. So it makes it really easy to, to manage a large workloads on Kubernetes and then have Prometheus just come and monitor your applications. So the service discovery is really simple. You get the bag, now to get started and show you how the Prometheus operator works, we have a namespace here called apps and I have a bunch of pods running. This is just a um, Python application that I'm running. If I get service, we also expose this Python application over a load balancer and I can show you our Python application is running over here. It's just a hello world application that exposes Prometheus metrics. Now, if you're interested in um, knowing how to expose Prometheus metrics in your application, I have a video to do that in Python, Node.js, um, Golang, as well as .NET Core. Check the link in the description. I also have a GitHub video with example source code. Um, so you can basically just install the SDK in your application and start uh, monitoring your application and produce metrics. Now I have all the source code on GitHub and you can see we have a Prometheus monitoring folder. Inside that I created a Kubernetes folder and for this version, um, at the date and time of recording this, I'm using the Kubernetes version 1.14.8. So this may or may not work with previous or older version of um, Kubernetes. So I just thought I'd pin the version number here. Um, if you're running 1.16, you can happily try this out. Um, I may make future videos on Prometheus in future versions of Kubernetes. That's why I decided to pin the version number, um, just to show you guys that it's been tested with 1.14.8. So what we're interested in here is the Prometheus operator. Now you can just kubectl apply this entire folder. This is basically the cluster role bindings, the cluster roles. Um, this is the permissions that Prometheus operator needs in order to operate. This is the deployment spec um, showing you basically how to deploy this operator and describing the deployment of it. The service account used to run the operator. Then we also have a service and we have a service monitor as well. So it basically can scrape itself for telemetry. So everything you're about to see is grabbed from the Prometheus operator documentation for on CoreOS website. This is being migrated to Red Hat as we speak, um, but there is also a GitHub repo for all this documentation. So this is my source of truth. Um, I don't like to use Helm charts for deploying this because it can get quite over-engineered and complex. I like to know exactly what I deploy. So in this video, you will see the bare minimum amount of YAML files that you need um, to get this up and running. So everything I'm about to show you is documented in here. I grabbed it all from here um, and I created this GitHub repo with minimal amounts of um, definitions that you're going to need to run this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a namespace called monitoring. Now, if you wanna use any other um, namespace, note that um, the namespace is not specified in any of the definitions except for the role bindings because the role bindings has a service account reference that needs to know where that namespace is of the service account. So if you wanna deploy using a different namespace, you're just gonna to have to come into the role bindings and change that. So we go ahead and create the namespace. And then what we do is we say kubectl apply in the um, monitoring namespace. Um, we say dash F and we're going ahead and we're gonna apply Prometheus monitoring Kubernetes 1.14 Prometheus and we want to apply the operator folder. Go ahead and apply that and then we have to wait a little while for the Prometheus instance to come up, the operator, because the operator will create the service monitor and the Prometheus um, custom resource definitions. 
So now you can see our Prometheus operators up and running. And now we can go ahead and create as many Prometheus instances as we want. Now, this is completely up to you how you want to design this, whether you want a Prometheus per team, whether you want a Prometheus per namespace. Do you want one specifically dedicated for the Kubernetes API server, one for each of them nodes? And what this allows you to do is to basically separate and isolate all these monitoring instances because they also use memory. They can be memory intensive. So depending on your workloads, you may want to isolate them and maybe have a node selector to pin them to specific node pools in your cluster. That way that if you have an outage and you don't have... Um, just one central Prometheus, your blast radius will be uh, reduced if you have it like a little bit more um, separated. So since this video is more about the Prometheus operator, I'm just going to go ahead and deploy a standalone Prometheus. So I'll show you what that looks like. And now you can see the YAML has become way more simplified. So I say I want a Prometheus instance. I'm just going to give this name as Prometheus standalone. Um, I'm going to give it a label. You can um, give a number of replicas. This is the version we want to deploy of Prometheus. And here, what I do is I, I tell it which service monitors to select and what namespaces to look at. So I tell it I want to match these keys. So basically just a label selector. So I, I'll have service monitors called K8 app um, inside of a namespace called apps. So this is up to you again, how you want to design this. You can also, um, use the other keys like this is how you would monitor cube state metrics api server and the kubelets we'll go ahead in um, in a deep dive video of cluster monitoring in a later stage this is just to showcase the prometheus operator um, you can also have rule selectors as well as resource limits and here i just specify a service account for this one and then the basic role bindings that we're going to need for that service account and then also the role so in this case i just want to be able to um to list out and retrieve pod services and endpoints here and then over here i have a service monitor now the service monitor um is just called apps because I have a namespace called apps, I want a service monitor that will basically go and scrape all services in that namespace. Um, it's going to use the Prometheus standalone um, instance. And then we have a selector here. So this will select all Kubernetes service objects with the label app example app. And it will also look in the namespace um, called app. So it won't look at any other namespace. So this is nice to have like a standalone Prometheus instance that just looks after a specific namespace with a bunch of microservices. It'll look for an endpoint called port HTTP. Now, if we take a look at my hello world application, my Python application, um, if we go into the Kubernetes service side of it, I have a service for this example app and it has a label called app example app. So this is important. You have to have a, the label on your service that you want to scrape. And then your service monitor has to have the corresponding selector for that label. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to say kubectl apply on that apps namespace. I'm going to deploy a Prometheus standalone instance with a service monitor in that namespace. And once I do this, once that Prometheus comes up, it's going to start scraping all the services with that label in that namespace. And I'm basically going to get all the metrics pulled into that Prometheus instance. So now you can see if I do a get pods, I have my example app running. I also have a Prometheus instance. So the operator went and created a Prometheus instance um, in this namespace, the service monitor is starting to scrape the hello world application. The Prometheus is pulling it from the service monitor. And if we go ahead, we can actually port forward to that Prometheus instance on port 9090. And if we open up the browser on line 9090, we can see we have two pods being scraped. So Prometheus is now um, pulling in the metrics. If we type in Python, we can see we have our request durations and all our metrics coming through um, in this Prometheus instance. And now you can use your um, Elasticsearch, Grafana, Kibana, or whatever it is to um, basically display and visualize all these metrics. So that is it on the Prometheus operator. You can see um, once you understand the concept, it is really, really simple to deploy. So um, please remember the source code is on GitHub. And if there's um, anything else you'd like me to cover in this series, 
um, feel free to leave a comment down below. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how to monitor the Kubernetes cluster itself. So we'll take a look at monitoring the machines, the Kubernetes API server and other things as well. So um, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe. And until next time, peace. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy